The American punch counted. War-weary Germans surrendered in droves. The end was near at hand. And finally, on that unforgettable November the 11th, the blessed armistice came to the French. The triumphant legions of the Allies and the AEF swept back from the hard-won fields of victory. And over the whole world rose a pian and clamor of hysterical joy at the end of the horrible struggle. Paris, London, New York. Who could ever forget that surging, glorious day of celebration in New York City? From tip to tip of Manhattan Island, the streets were jammed from curb to curb by people utterly abandoned to joy. It was unbelievable, incredible, dazing and dazzling. It was the American spirit, unchained and soaring. Something to be seen once in a century. But victory is not all celebration. Hard work was yet to be done at home and abroad. The president desired to bring about a just peace which would not carry the seeds of future war. The high hope he went to France with our great commanding General John J. Pershing at his side. He reviewed a full division of crack troops at Chaumont, General Pershing's headquarters. And once more Franklin Roosevelt found himself in France, this time to clean up the debris of war. The AEF was coming home now, its work well done. With song and cheering, they piled aboard the homeless bound transport, while Assistant Secretary Roosevelt directed the sale and dispersal of naval supplies and cleaned up in his thorough style. Finally, Pershing and the boys were back, Black Jack heading the greatest and finest army that ever assembled under the stars and stripes. And how a million people roared acclaim that thundering day of the great victory parade in New York City. <laughs> 